Welcome to the Live Truly Free podcast, where we provide fatherly guidance to entrepreneurs at any level of their journey. Hi, I'm George Black, and this is AJ. Are you ready for this week's adventure of building great companies and discovering the Live Truly Free lifestyle for entrepreneurs? Awesome. Let's get started. Welcome back to our podcast. Uh, This is AJ, the voice of Max North, and I'm George, and I'm the voice of Mr. A. We just recently recorded The Next Level Entrepreneur in audiobook format. And it's, we're still editing, but it's going to be due out anytime soon. And AJ, you had a question about something in the book that I thought was really interesting. Yeah. So for this letter today, I wanted to talk about was the secret to the process. Um, and the first thing that jumped off the page to me was this is a letter from Max to Mr. A. Right. And within the, it's on the second par or the third paragraph, actually, Max is talking about how he'd gotten really good at being typewriting and being able to do that fast um, in the military. And how he'd been doing that for some of the exercises, but he then realized it was probably better for this one to handwrite things. Um, and to me, right away when I read that, I was, I was screaming, "Oh, this is George talking about like some generational difference." Is that <laughs> correct? <laughs> well, I, yeah. So, what did you mean by generational difference? Like you're you're referring to how like Max he learned how to type and then he started doing that all of a sudden, and then he had he went back to writing by hand. So it's like. The older generations more like to write things while newer generations try to type things as much as they can. But then Max kind of realized, oh, there is some wisdom into writing things by hand. Right. Yeah. So um, I don't know how much as the author I really want to confess here. (laughs) But uh, so something that I had always wanted to be able to do was like type really, really fast where you didn't even think and just kind of, you know, you could just type, type, type and just from your mind to the, yeah, in Max's case, the paper the screen, that sort of thing. And I, I've, I've taken a lot of people through the Next Level Navigator process that's in the book. And, and a lot of people want to do it on the computer. And it's kind of like, and so I'm like, well, okay, if you really want to. But honestly, it just doesn't connect as well. It's yeah. hard to get ideas out of here and through the typewriter or the keyboard, through the keyboard and and have it work yeah it's almost like that that because when you're writing by hand you're it's your mind's controlling your body here but it's almost like when you go to a screen your mind is there something separating you from your body and your words right it's this screen it's this keyboard rather than just your hand do you think some there's some connection between the, the mind and the hand yeah yeah so when you're when your hand so this is for you personally but when you're handwriting, are you thinking about, oh, I'm going to make an O this way. I'm going to make an H this way. No. It is writing. Yeah. Like you write your S's how you write your, like you make, you, you've been writing your O's. Even like if that. it happens in a microsecond, I think there's, there's a, oh, H is here, G is here, I is here, J is here, K is here, Z is here. Yeah. There's something that the keyboard causes us to think. We yeah. have to think something in there, whereas there's something more in eight. It's like a pure stream just flowing of thought Yeah, straight onto the paper when you have a pen. That's a good point. And I've always been, I haven't been conscious of, like, I didn't, I've never thought about it in that way. Of like, oh, there's something between the keyboard and my brain mm-hmm. that's causing some lag. And really- yeah, your brain's having to do something else. The, the thing, too, like, if you handwrite your notes, so... The good thing is I would often take notes at talks that I'm not going to get a grade for. I'm just yeah. there to absorb information because this is a really powerful speaker or something like that. I still take notes because it sticks in my brain. Yeah. Uh, beyond just writing, because uh, that's key to the process and handwriting and typing right. is an interesting conversation. But there's another thing you talk about in this letter is rewriting. Um, so I, I had a, prof- a teacher in high school who would always quote this uh, Vladimir Nabokov. I don't know if you know who that is. I don't know. He's some like Russian writer. Um, (laughs) But he made this quote that reading is rereading. So saying that like just reading something once isn't actually reading it. You have to reread it to be able to get the full understanding of what you just read. Um, And you talk about rewriting in this book. So that reminded me of that Mm -hmm. because when you rewrite something, Mr. A speaks to it that there's some 
there's some benefit to rewriting things. So right. I wanted to know what your thoughts on that. Were. Yeah. So part of the so a big part of the book um, is includes my next level navigator, which is a strategic process. Yeah. And and so it's an as Mister I say it, <laughs> this is one of the words we struggled on in the audio book <laughs> an iterative. Iterative? Iterative. 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 It was an easy word for me to write. I know exactly what it means. But and that's what it looked like recording the audio. Book. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was the, that was what it was. There you go. Which means it, you just you're so it's a repeating kind of process. Yeah. So like you're going to come up with ideas um, for strategy, for example. Okay. And then you're going to take those strategies and you're going to pick out your top ones and then you're going to rewrite them into your top five. Or, and so so you read the book and and you'll see the process. Well. What people want to do is, oh, well, that's easy. Control C, Control V. I'll just cut. I'll just paste. Copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. Mm -hmm. The problem with that is, is the idea never gets any better. Part of it is, is like the idea is rough. And as we start working on it, we start refining it and it mm -hmm. gets better and better. And then I go, wait a minute, you know, then I had this other idea. And so we start combining. And so like Mr. A says, okay, you've got to take these 10 ideas and you want to take your top five. And you're like, yeah, but I could take number six, seven, and three and mash that all into one and rewrite it. Not where it's like three sentences long, but where it's like a half a sentence, but it captures the elements of all three of those elements, uh, all three of those strategies. And it's, and in fact, it's in this chapter where, where Mr. A says, um, I would encourage you to heed the words of Polonius from William Shakespeare's play Hamlet, quote, brevity is the soul of wit, unquote. Brevity is, is like really refining it to the central thought and precisely stating it. And that's what you want to do with, particularly with strategies. Yeah. And that, that reminds me, because I was actually hearing a professor talk about this, where he says anytime he's writing a paper, when he writes an idea, he's going to write that five more times, five different ways. And then from there, he's going to pick which one is the best way to say it. So it's like a very iterative process, which does take a lot more time. But you're going to get to more core ideas and you're going to develop that idea and figure out better ways to say it, more brief ways to say it, so that you could be as concise and precise as possible. A little behind the scenes on the book, I employed that process that your professor is talking about, literally, not mm -hmm. exactly five times, but well, some letters were 10 um, or 15. I mean... You'd but, rewrite whole letters? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. I mean... Uh, I w over and over and over till I got it to where it was that precise, the preciseness that I thought it should have. Yeah. And I wanted to know because is there more than just with rewriting, is there more than just making it more precise? Is there, does it do anything like oh, mentally for oh, you? By yeah, yeah, yeah. So you want to improve the idea. Yeah. I mean, so, so like the more you, let, let's say, let's say you've got brainstorming out different strategies. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cause this is where it's going to really rubber's going to meet the road. And, and it's like, is this strategy any good? Yeah. You know, and so you keep reworking it and you're like, I just can't make this thing. It sounded good when we threw it up there on the board, mm -hmm. but now I don't know. Let's, that one's not going to make it. Yeah. You know, so, so it isn't just about getting precise language, but it's getting the precise idea. Yeah. The right idea for the right moment at the right time mm -hmm. to where it all works to accomplish the right thing. Yeah. And then there's a point in this book where Max has like a happenstance encounter with somebody and he's able to impress them by talking about what he, all of his plans that he's been making. Um, do you think that was the product of him rewriting so many times that because he rewrote ideas and he workshopped these ideas to get them more precise, to get to the best ideas for that moment, do you think because that process of rewriting, do you think that really like transfused it into his mind so that it's, yeah. it's like into your subconscious when you rewrite something. That well, and I think, I, think, I think this phrase is in there, um, is, is that he internalized his next level yeah, navigator. That's how he calls it, yeah. So, so the writing and the rewriting um, internalized it. We actually did this. Um, so, so the foreword is written by my friend Stephen E. Takash, um, and he's a PhD in strategic management. And so we, we tested all the processes in the book in his, like with a hundred strategic management students over a couple of semesters mm -hmm. and they were senior level students. So they're like, this is their final course really before they, they head out. And, and what we found, and so what he was real big about was they had to come up with a navigator and, um, and they had to internalize it so that 
He didn't want them reading from notes. Yeah. And there's no PowerPoint. There's no nothing. And and they would and they literally had like three to four minutes, and then we would Shark Tank them. So they presented the Navigator like exactly in the book, and then we would Shark Tank them. It was absolutely amazing and how how much they had internalized the good students, and which was most of these guys and gals. Really, really, not only could they, not only could they give a good presentation using the Navigator, mm -hmm. but then they could answer questions about it because they just knew it. Yeah, and that takes me to the point in the book where Mr. A, as he's guiding Max through his own next level navigator, Mr. A on the side, without telling Max, is actually doing this rewriting and right. writing process for Max's next level navigator, just so that he can give Max the best ideas, because he's a really good sage. Right. Um, that Well, actually, it wasn't to give Max ideas. It was to draw the best ideas out of Max. Okay. Yeah. So that, or like, he can help, he can best guide Max if he's right. doing the same thing. Right. Um, but, That's just an important little distinction that the author has to... Uh, yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Don't want to misrepresent. <laughs> so, that idea, I think, like, is a good way to conclude our things on how rewriting helps you with the idea, but also then it segues me to the point that I wanted to make and ask you about was because Mr. A was writing these all in his journal, it says. Mm -hmm. And it, the book notes that they look at Max's journals and Mr. A's journals right. throughout it, and they pull quotes from them, and... Uh, there's small briefs from the journals or whatever. Um, a lot of journaling going on with, <laughs> between these two gentlemen outside of their correspondence. They're journaling alone. Uh, so, well, what's what's up with journaling? What, why is it important? Why does it help these guys? Why did you make these guys have keep journals the entire time? Well, first of all, they wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So. I have found that journaling, um, and I, I brought an example. I, I really like fancy leather, gold embossed uh, with lines. Oh, and really nice paper. And opening a new journal, and it's crisp, and you, the leather. Oh, and it's just, it's, it's like, and I, you can see it's 200 pages, and every page has got, it's full. Um, the thing about journaling is, is, is there's a whole lot of things about it, but one of the things it will train you to do is think about what you think about. Now that line actually appears in the book, um, but it's, it's something nobody in our culture does. We are in the swipe generation. We have attention spans of like a gnat. <laughs> actually, gnats may have surpassed us, yeah. <laughs> you know, and so we're swiping, we're this, we're that, da 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 and we never think about, well, why do I think that? Well, or, and you know, you see something on Instagram, okay, mm -hmm. and you're like, I don't like that. Boom, you go on. Whoa, 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 think about that for a minute. What is it that you don't like about it? Why did you swipe? Why did you just hop off of that, and why did you go to that one and not that one? We never think about that. George, that is the dumbest thing in the world. Do you know how many videos I could have watched in the whole time you took to explain that? Um, <laughs> yeah. So the thing is, is that we don't think about what we think about. Those are the people. Those are the people who lead well. Those are the people that are successful. Those are the people that begin to uh, gain wisdom and understanding. Yeah. So I try to think about what I think about, but I don't journal, right? I just think about it in my head as I'm driving, as I'm in the shower, I'm just like thinking about the day or whatever. Right. Um, and so clearly you journal. I'm starting to think I probably should. Would you agree with that? Well, you could. Would it be beneficial for me to Should is a guilt producing yeah, word. I, yeah, I know <laughs> you're old. We, we've been over this one before. Sorry. And we will keep going over this one. <laughs> when I mean, when I say should, I mean, do you think it'd be beneficial? Oh no, I listen to, to your words. See, when you, when you journal and you think about what you think about, you realize, wait a minute, I am, what we say really shapes us. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to pick on that shit. Yeah. I'm not being on <laughs> But, but it, it's like, this is, so I think you could journal. Yeah. I think it would be immensely helpful. Okay. I think it is the way to process ideas out. Yeah. And so my next, my follow-up question to that would be about what? Do I just write like a recap of the day? Do I yeah. talk so about it's some not, future idea I have? Yeah, 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 yeah. So let me say what it's not. It's not, dear diary, today I got a chocolate milkshake. <laughs> no, no, that's not what we're doing. If it's about the day, 
it's something in the day that I'm preparing for, or it's, it's like, maybe there's going to be a tough meeting mm -hmm. and how am I going to handle this? Um, I'm going to have a lunch with this guy and, oh man, this has been, these have never gone well. Mm -hmm. You know, what's that about? Um, so, I want to, I want to get into my emotions. Mm -hmm. I, I, so currently I'll just give you a current one. I'm not going to say anything about what's in my journal. Uh, but here's a great question. You need some questions. You could use some prompts. Maybe, maybe this is something I should do is do a quick little book on this. Some prompts. What are you feeling right now? Mm -hmm. As you begin your day, as you end your day, maybe you're journaling in the middle of the day. What are you feeling right now? And so that would be a good guiding question. Uh huh. But also I'm hearing when you're talking about meetings or going to a lunch, I'm hearing. So if I know this might be a tough meeting I'm going into. I would, I feel like I would journal almost like a, a character description of everyone that's going to be in that meeting. John, he's the, he's the quick tempered one, wants things precise, needs exact numbers. And if you hesitate for a second, he's going to like flip out. Yeah. Like kind of like writing notes like that. And then maybe writing, what am I feeling about interacting okay. with all these yeah. people? So, so those are thoughts you have thought, mm -hmm. but you've never read them. Yeah. So you write them down and you read them and you're like, whoa, I haven't been handling John right at all. Yeah. Um, you could go to this. This is going to be a tough meeting. What's that about? What's that about is a great question to ask yourself. Mm -hmm. When you observe yourself, so you start observing yourself. Oh, that meeting yesterday was so hard. What's that about? <laughs> Why do I feel like that? What's going on? Mm -hmm. And this isn't therapy, okay? This is, this is, it, it, well, okay, so there might be some therapeutic techniques in this, mm -hmm. okay? But what this is, is it's like just becoming more self-aware. And yeah. if you start putting that, see, this book is all about getting you to be more self-aware. Mm -hmm. We start off with childhood dreams. We're not aware of our childhood dreams. That was childhood. Wait, yeah. wait, 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 wait. Well, what did you dream? When you built that tree house in the tree, what were you imagining? Mm -hmm. I can barely remember that. I don't know. Wait a minute. Oh. And you start going back into that mm -hmm. stuff? And then what happened to that tree house? I don't know. I think it... Wait a minute. My dad took it down. Oh, wait a minute. And stuff starts coming... This is stuff that gets buried in our lives. Mm -hmm. And through, now I'm shifting a little bit towards the process of discovering that burial, right? Because as you write, you, every writer has a, takes a certain voice, right? Um, and as you journal, you're writing in a voice. And if it's more about discovering and exploring your observations, trying to think through those things, it's not like that meeting was tough. Why do I feel like that? Oh, I got the answer. I'll write it down. It's not like a worksheet uh, from school, right? Where you have your fill in the blank, you have three lines, write your right answer. Um, <laughs> no, it's not like that at all. Yeah. Okay, so let me give you an example. Mm -hmm. well, let me give you an example. So one of the things I do is I put the date I start the journal and the date it ended in okay. the front cover. I couldn't put the date. Well, I, I don't write the ending date till I fill the, the journal. Yeah. yeah. So, so the thing is, why do I do that? What I've observed is that when I've been through like what we call in the book colossal disruptions in my life or even sort of disruptions, when I'm going through tough stuff, I am burning through journals. <laughs> <laughs> and lately it's, well, this isn't a current journal, but, but lately it's um, page, half page on the average mm -hmm. a day. And when you're writing to discover these answers, so you say, what was that about? And you have your first inclination that you think, oh, it might be about this. I'm thinking about that. And then you're like, oh, I think I'm wrong on that. And you keep writing, right? So how do you like, when you're writing your journal, is it almost like, I think this was about that. And then you write for a few lines and you're like, oh, wait, no, I've been so wrong. Everything I just wrote was wrong. Like, there's no, that's, it's not about that. It's actually about this. Like it's almost, or do you almost start having like a dialogue with yourself on the page? Yeah, you can. Yeah. Uh, 
that, but something that you just said triggered me. So pull out your phone. I need to give you all some guidance on this. You see this? Turn it off. Mm -hmm. In fact, don't even look at it. I, I recommend first thing in the morning. Okay. Get yourself a cup of coffee, tea, or whatever it is that you like. Um, maybe have breakfast a little bit later. Mm -hmm. Don't even look at this thing. Stay away from it. This will immediately take you. Well, to, it's your it's your beacon to the world. It it takes you. You get this text from some person. You're like that's so you know. And now you're not gonna get anywhere in your journal. Yeah. You know. My thought was I would do it at the end of the day, like, and the journal would be the last thing I see before I go to bed. That's good. That works too. And you figure out the rhythm that works, mm -hmm. but you turn everything off an hour before. You need to decompress from the technology. So maybe, maybe you can handle 60 seconds. But your goal is to get to 60 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, but seriously, and I mean, TV, external stimuli, we want to start power down. Yeah. And then the first thing we do in the morning, boom, we power up. We look at this and it tells, no, 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 no. Just have a cup of coffee. Just have a or tea or milk or whatever you drink or have a little breakfast, you know. Yeah. Have something. This would be a great book to read every morning. <laughs> read a page or two every morning. Yeah. Um, and do something that like that, you know, so you sort of ease into the day. Yeah. And then ease out. And the journal is going to be your, your transporting device. Okay. And so... I have um, another one here too. I have tons of these. Yeah, I imagine you probably have a closet full. Yeah, I buy three a year just in case. Mm -hmm. But most of the time, it's like nine months to 12. Yeah. One year it was like I burned through like three or four. That's <laughs> a bad year. <laughs> um, but because of this, I got through. Yeah. So in this letter, the secret to the process, I think this was the letter we referred least to. Mm hmm. Um, in terms of like going back and reading a direct quote. Yeah, no, I'm loving talking about this because because yeah. we're really we're pulling out all the ideas and saying oh, the letter is written, but these are the ideas it talks about. Um, it's talking about the power of writing and what it has to do and embedding things in your mind, pulling things out of your mind, and also the act of journaling helps you understand more about your mind, right? So the secret to the process, if you will, is that the power of writing is the secret to the process because it can unlock so many things, correct? Well, kind of. It, <laughs> so I said this in the previous podcast. Um, yes, it, it does. It, it goes beyond your mind. Yeah. It starts with your mind, but we don't want to stop with your mind. We want to go to the essence of who you are. Yeah. We want to go to the core of who you are. See, where, where are you headed? We've got to know direction. The direction you're headed is, what on earth are you here for? Who am I intended to be? You never wrote down one note your entire life to figure out who you are and why you're on this planet and who intends me to be what or what is this. I'm given unique gifts and characteristics for what reason, for what purpose. And you never wrote down one scrap of paper to figure that out, your 87 years of life or whatever it will be. Mm -hmm. Wow. I wouldn't want to have to explain that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. I'm through 20, I'm through 21 and uh, I don't have much written down. So I think I'm going to start changing that. Uh, yeah. So. And I, so in all candor, I didn't start really journaling. I mean, it's been a couple of decades now, but I mean, way late in life. I mean, so. Um, so I might have it, a head start on you. you you'll have a, You definitely have a head start. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, but I mean, anytime is great to start and, uh, and, and even if you just journal like once a week, you yeah. know, you don't have to do it every day, yeah. but just get, start, when you start using your hand and a pen like this writing instrument here that, so you push this little button and that comes out and then this magic ink comes out and <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, I mean, we're so technologically dependent. Mm -hmm. You know, and now we've got the uh, chat GPT is thinking for us and we don't even have to just tell me who I am, chat GPT. <laughs> <laughs> do you have any suggestions on how to start journaling? Yeah, I do. Uh, you know, honestly, and I know, I know, I know, I know. 
this is going to sound like a shameless plug, but the sage advice to apply in this book is so good. I would say start there okay. and, 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 and follow along with Max and just start writing it out mm -hmm. in a journal. And, and just accumulate your ideas and just watch that flow. Now, here's the fascinating thing with the journal. This one, this one is from, uh, I think this one's older. This one is from uh, mid-22. Um, that was last year. And this one is, I guess, before that. This goes all the way back to mid-21. Um, you can go back and see what you said a few years from now. Yeah. And, and you go back through the same exercises and, and, and you read journal. You can compare them. You can compare. And you're going to see growth. Mm -hmm. You're going to see movement. Then, then I would say, if I really want to do the journaling, what if you did a Next Level Navigator for yourself? Not a business. It's, I mean, that's where I've used it. But it also works incredible for your own personal self. Mm -hmm. You know, what, where are you headed? What do you envision for yourself? What's your next level? And, and just start to see what, I would journal around all of that. Okay. I think that's a very practical takeaway for people to start. Uh, the book is great. It's not. I'm all about practical. And doing the exercises isn't painful at all, guys. It, I, I think it'll be beneficial for people. It, it makes you think about yourself. Which, right. Who doesn't like doing that? Yeah. <laughs> I'm my favorite topic. <laughs> but not always. I'd much rather talk about you than me. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, we got we to gotta hop. We will see you next week. and. For more conversations like this one between me and AJ, check out this video right here. I know you're going to love it. And in the meantime, may you live truly free.